when the moral core of your life and the moral core of your livelihood don't come together, there's a problem. Through it all, I might be a CEO today and I love the job, I love where I am, but I will tell you, if I had to write a letter to myself as a younger person, I'd say, be careful about all the choices you're making. We make fun products. So we wanted to give people a, a real purpose why coming to work at PepsiCo was the greatest thing. Need motivation? Watch Top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Indra Nui and my take on her top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, romance the consumer. Let me now tell you what is design. To me, design is something that you embed into a product or a service or an offering that romances the consumer and draws them to the shelf or to the product or to the service or whatever it is. It's how you think about the shape of the product, how it's presented, how it's talked about, not just the color of the package, everything in terms of the experience that actually draws the consumer in. And we never thought about design that way. We thought about it as, is the yellow on the lace bag right? Should we put an extra swirl of red? Or should we put an extra emoji on the Pepsi bottle? So our definition of design was very, very, I hate to use the word, but primitive. And I was part of that group. So we all went to design school and learned all about design, not in terms of the package, but all the way down into design of the product. Example, um, when you eat Doritos, how many of you are Doritos consumers here? I love it. So, you know, when you eat Doritos, um, when you get to the bottom of the bag, a typical guy would take the Doritos bag and just do this, okay? Because you, you sort of eat the crumbs that way. Women don't do that. Women try to be very delicate putting their hand in, taking the last Doritos, but then you're leaving about 5% of the Doritos in the bag, okay? <laughs> but because there are little crumbs there which taste awesome. But in our package design, why don't we figure out a product design for Doritos that is completely different that a woman can actually put in a purse so it doesn't crumple, and you can actually eat it in a more delicate way, but all the way down to the last 5%. I'm using Doritos in as an example. solving real world problems here, <laughs> right in front of you. Doug. It's good stuff. <laughs> Doug, I gotta tell you, if I solve the problems, you get more sales. <laughs> so it is a real world problem. At the end of the day, I worry about one thing, growing my sales with Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> but, but leaving that aside, so that's an example of how you take design thinking all the way to the product design itself. Um, the other is when you think about a food service machine. In the past, you know, with the standard machines. And now, with the new Spire machines we have, which are slowly rolling out, um, you can have almost four or five hundred variants. But the machine looks like uh, a beautiful, beautiful iPad, but even more on, uh, in, in an aesthetically pleasing way. And so you bring design into a day-to-day -day experience that was quite boring. So that's what design thinking is doing to PepsiCo. Rule number two, make the change. When the moral core of your life and the moral core of your livelihood don't come together, there's a problem. And that's what was happening. Why performance with purpose was something people felt deep down inside, but struggled to articulate, is because they realized the articulation required investment and required change, but feeling it deep down inside meant that change had to happen. And so I think, Memo, the reason we were both able to make the change, uh, we didn't have the you know, usual critics, but the reason we were able to make the change is everybody felt the need for change deep down inside. So, uh, you know, it caught on and I hope it continues that way. Um, but at the time, we were ahead of the pack, 
But if you really want to have a good company, you have to be ahead of the pack. There's no point doing it after the horse has left the barn. Rule number three, be careful about choices. I tell you a painful, painful story. Um, the other day, when we moved back to our headquarters and purchase after renovation, I had the opportunity to go through all my old mail, and I found a, a letter that my daughter had written to me, my second daughter, and I joined PepsiCo when she was 18 months old. And I lived in the company, I just worked all the time, and um, my desk was being given away to get a new desk. And she said, Mom, you can't give away that desk. I said, why not? She said, I slept in this little area underneath your table <laughs> with my blankie all the time I was growing up. How can you give this desk away? And I sat back and said, my God, what a memory for her to have. Yeah. I, I, and, uh, <laughs> and then I was going through the files. There's a, a letter from her to me which I'm keeping because I have to remind myself of what I lost. It says, dear mom, I love you. Please come home. Please, 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 please come home. I love you, but I love you more if you came home. <laughs> this is my four or five year old writing these notes. So how did I do it? Huge number of sacrifices, huge, huge number of sacrifices, trade-offs. Uh, and I think through it all, I might be a CEO today and I love the job, I love where I am, but I will tell you, if I had to write a letter to myself as a younger person, I'd say, be careful about all the choices you're making because uh, you will look back and it'll hurt like hell, and it does. Mm -hmm. But do you regret it? I'd regret is too serious a word. Mm -hmm. The heart aches many times. Mm -hmm. And it's not regret. I love what I'm doing. I may have regretted not doing it had I just stayed home and spent all my time with them. So this is a very, com regret is a very complex word, simple yeah. word that's got deep meaning. Rule number four, observe the trends. If companies look at themselves as being around for decades, not for a few years, decades and decades and decades, you constantly have to look at the outside environment and say, what's changing? And what do I have to do today to reposition the company for the changes that are coming? Because if you try to change just in time, you won't do it well. You'll do it hurriedly, it won't stick. So one of the things we did was we looked at the mega trends that are going to impact PepsiCo. With strategic acuity and foresight, constantly look around the world. What are the mega trends? Now you can identify hundreds of mega trends. We, co we picked the 10 mega trends that are going to impact us. Then we said to ourselves, what is the impact of those mega trends in a company like PepsiCo? What should we do to change ourselves? What kind of moves do we have to make? What kind of people do we need to hire? Once we had that core document, we could now take it to our senior executives and our board of directors and tell them that we had to embark on a program to shift our portfolio. And when I say shift our portfolio, Tom, I'm not saying walking away from our core products. It's the and strategy, not the or strategy. Stay with our products, but add lower calorie options, add healthier options, and then go back and make the fun options great tasting, but less of the bad, less fat, less sugar, less salt. These are major R&D challenges, let me assure you, because you're impacting taste. You've got to be very careful. But our employees looked at this and said, we're keeping the best of the past, but we're creating a new future consistent with the consumer trends. Also, if you want to have more self-confidence and self-belief, check out my 254 series where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you an unlisted video. The science says it takes up to 254 days of consecutive action to build a habit. So I'm going to be with you every step of the way. If you want to be on for free, 100% free, there's a link below. Go check it out. I'll see you there. You might want to get honest with yourself. Like instead of doing this I don't want to be a millionaire, I want to do this. Do you really? Because you can make it happen. You actually can. Look at all the idiots that are making money. You can make money. First of all, you got to be uh, open to taking some risks and not being afraid to fail. When I was selling copiers door to door, I had a very clear vision of what my life was going to be like. Rule number five, fight for your beliefs. When I became CEO, I called Steve Jobs and I said, I'd like to spend a little bit of time with you and just to sort of... Uh, understand what it is to run a company the way you have changed it. And he graciously agreed to spend some time with me and he gave me two or three hours, I think, of his time. And some of the lessons he taught me about design, 
how do you take something that you truly believe in and stick with it as opposed to changing your point of view because the outside world wants you to change your point of view? Uh, were phenomenal lessons, that he was so gracious to give me the time and that he gave me those lessons I'll never forget. I think the world lost an incredible person in him. He did tell me a few things like, don't be too nice when you really don't get what you want and you really believe that's the right thing for the company, it's okay to throw a temper tantrum. Throw things around, you will, you know, people will talk about it and they'll know it's important for you. And I think that, that itself was a valuable lesson. In terms of, I honestly believe that. Rule number six, be ready to act confident. What is your guidance to people who are feeling, leaders who are feeling the weight of the world on them, on their shoulders? Look, everybody's waiting for you to buckle under pressure, okay? Especially for women, unfortunately, uh, the expectation is that you won't be confident and you won't be able to withstand tremendous yeah. pressure. So when you have to go through all the pressure, act as if you're confident, you're absolutely in control, and if you really do need to scream or have a good cry, which I did now and then, I locked my room. And I said yeah. to my secretary, don't let anybody in here for 15 minutes. Did you cry? <laughs> yeah, sure. You cried. OK, no, I want to know that. Out of frustration. Out of frustration. Frustration, yeah. And then put the makeup back on. <laughs> <laughs> back again. Rule number seven, care for the society. I strongly believed then, as I do now, that all corporations operate from a license, with a license from society. We're all limited liability companies, and the reason we have limited liability is because society gives us a license to operate. And because we have the license to operate, we owe society a duty of care, which means that if you operate in a society, you have to worry about the costs that you as a company are imposing on society. And it is not right to think of your P&L as revenues less your own costs, and that's your profit. It's really revenues, less cost, less cost to society. That's a real profit because you can't toss costs onto taxpayers. So if you start with that as a notion of the enterprise, you have to start thinking about what can you do to reduce those costs that you pass on to society. Rule number eight, give purpose to employees. As we surveyed our employees, every one of them were looking for a purpose, something in life that made them feel good about the company. Remember, we don't make life-saving drugs. We don't provide technology that changes your life. We make fun products. So we wanted to give people a, a real purpose why coming to work at PepsiCo was the greatest thing. So what we did is we said, why don't we make the shifting of the portfolio, offering more nutritious products, offering more grains, offering more fruit and vegetable offerings, really becoming an environmentally conscious company and creating an environment in PepsiCo where everybody can bring their whole self to work. Part of the agenda as to how we make money, not how we spend the money, how we make money. And that got encapsulated in these three words, performance with purpose. It all starts with performance. We want to deliver the greatest financial returns, but we want to deliver those profits while we transform our product portfolio, worry about the planet, and worry about our people. And that was simply performance with purpose. And the fundamental difference between corporate social responsibility and performance with purpose is that performance with purpose is about how we make the money, not how we spend the money th that we make. So if we don't transform our portfolio, we cannot make profits. If we're not environmentally sustainable, we won't get a license to open a plant, and we won't reduce the cost of our packaging. And if we don't create a phenomenal workplace for our people, we won't be able to hire the best and the brightest. So we, uh, our purpose became how we deliver the profits. Rule number nine, experiment. How you talk to the existing consumers are very different than how you talk to the future consumers, all with the same brand. So whenever you have an, a media budget, now you have to divvy it up between the old line traditional media and the new tools that are digital, social media, we have to figure out a uh, allocation mechanism with uncertain returns on investment in the short term. So this is a long-term brand building, first point. Second is, uh, we have to figure out how to advertise differently because you just can't take a TV commercial that was developed for X Factor and just plonk it on digital media and say, you know, this is the new way we're gonna reach you. You guys will reject it. So we have to talk to you completely differently. We almost have to let you interact with the brand as opposed to it being a one-way conversation. So what we're learning to do is hire new people, allow them to experiment, 
allow them uh, to experiment in ways that says, you don't have to adhere to the old rules that existed in PepsiCo, which is all difficult for us. You know, as I said, when you have boomers and Gen Xers running the company and you allow, you actually think they're sort of uh, cowboys because they want to do things that are so alien to what we were brought up with. Right. At the same time, you're allowing a lot of the young people to experiment with new ways to reach consumers. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have fun. Besides all the work stuff I'm doing, I'm crazy busy. Uh, some years ago, I decided I wanted to learn ballroom dancing. So I started about three years ago because I stink it. With or without your husband? Without my husband, of course. Are you crazy? <laughs> Can you imagine? If I start to lead him, he's going to say, not again. <laughs> <laughs> so I started to learn a great teacher, young kid from England, terrified of me because you know, he's never come across a student like me because I'm like, let's get going, no talking. But what's the schedule? When are the tests? And so since culturally I have nothing to do with ballroom dancing and I stink at it, I decided I want to be good at it. So I go for lessons at ungodly hours in the morning and normally a lesson is 45 minutes, but I do two lessons at a time and this poor kid shows up early in the morning, gives me the lesson, and I'm making progress. So my bucket list is to... Learn I, Nobody outside is allowed to see me dance, but I want to dance in the mirrors or surrounding the studio, Without feeling great. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? When you watch a video and you get motivated, the science says you have a 35% chance of following through. That's not enough. <laughs> but when you write down what time, what place, and how you're going to actually take action on it, you jump to 91% chance of following through. And when you have public accountability and you commit to other people that you're gonna do it, it jumps to 95% that you will follow through. So I want that for you, Believe Nation. I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. I think every message in a change management program a process has to be communicated in a personal way to the employees. There's no point saying PepsiCo is gonna transform. Doesn't mean anything. You gotta bring it to each country, to each group of people, personalize the message, engage them, engage their hearts and their head so that they know that this is not a fad, this is a fundamental transformation against which we're gonna put people and money over multiple years to create a wonderful PepsiCo that's going to last for many, many more decades. So the whole thing was framed in the context of creating a defining corporation for well into the future. And that motivated all people to be part of the journey. If you want 10 more amazing rules from Indra Nui, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I'm serious. If you don't develop mechanisms with your secretaries, with the extended office, with everybody around you, it cannot work. Please help others rise.